So we're now recording. So welcome to a Mac Monday's webinar series. This will last around 40 minutes. Um, and this session is on proposing a Mac course. So um, I will be dropping some links in the chat as we get started. I'm gonna leave this slide on here just a little bit longer, um, but this is moderated by Jody Petazzoni and has many great panelists. So um, I'm gonna let them take over. Um, just one thing logistically as you are coming in, a couple things, I guess. Um, if you have questions throughout, feel free to drop them in the chat. Um, Jody will be taking questions at the end, but if you if you want to throw them in the chat, we'll be monitoring them there. Um, you are welcome to unmute at the end to ask questions or throughout as long as there's a pause. Um, and this is being recorded and will be put online. So if you don't want your camera on to not be on um, YouTube, that's where it's going to go, uh, then feel free to turn your camera off. That's totally fine. Um, I'm going to be doing it in a little bit. So if there are any questions besides, I will be putting the links in the chat in a second. Um, I will now unmute and Jody, you can take over. Excellent. Thanks so much. <laughs> Thank you. Um, this is a great time for us to present this segment on proposing a Mac course because while there are still courses going through the curriculum review process, there's also time to propose new courses um, or attach a general education competency to a course that already exists. Um, so I have this incredible panel of experts with me here today to talk to you directly about some history and some experiences that they've had with the MAC proposals and the MAC program in itself. So let's go ahead and introduce everybody first of all. Um, I'm Jody Pettizzoni. I am an Associate Vice Provost here at UNC Greensboro. And I have been involved with general education and the MAC in particular, um, essentially since the day I got here at UNCG 11 years ago. Um, and we're really excited about this new program and what it's going to offer to our students. So let me ask um, the rest of the group to introduce themselves. Amy, would you go first? Sure. I'm Amy Harris Houck. I um, I work in the university and libraries, and this year I am the chair of the General Education Council. Thank you. Serve on the Francis. Mac implementation team. Sorry, yeah. forgot about that. Thank you, uh, Francis. Would you go ahead? Sure. I'm Francis Bottenberg. I'm a lecturer in the philosophy department, and I'm also co-chairing the Mac implementation committee this academic year. Uh, I've been involved in the MAC uh, revision process for a few years, and I'm so thrilled that this program is officially launched this fall. Thank you. Lynn? Hi, I'm Lynn Weirich. I work in, in Jody's office. I've worked with the General Education Council and the program for 12 or so years. I provide support for the Gen Ed Council and the Undergraduate Curriculum Committee, as well as um, administrative things in the course leaf system. Appreciate you. Thanks, Lynn. And last but not least, Aaron. Oh, thanks. Uh, I'm Aaron Turnova. I'm in the Department of Kinesiology. Uh, I've been involved in general education and MAC. I was on uh, the implementation. I'm currently on the implementation committee. I am the ex general education chair. I had yielded my power and throne to Amy, who's doing a fantastic <laughs> job. Uh, so I can have historical pre uh, perspective of kind of how we got to where we are right now and, and how we're moving forward. Awesome. Thank you. Chair Emeritus, as Amy said. Oh, I like that. I'm going to use that from now on. Chair Emeritus. Hey, Aaron, would you start us off? Um, what are things that faculty should be thinking about when they're deciding which competency fits their course or their course fits which competency? Yeah, and that's a really uh, great great way to start off because I think one thing that the MAC is embracing a lot is we want this not to be a siloed program anymore where quantitative can only occur in one department and natural sciences can only occur in one department. It really is, if you're proposing a course and looking at a course and what competency that you fit into, the, the MAC should really be the, the overarching aspect of that course. So when you're looking to propose a course, we don't want it to be, I happen to be teaching this course and I think I can tweak it and kind of fit it into Mac. That's trying to fit around, was it a square peg into a round hole? Is that the one I'm looking for? And that's not what you want when you're thinking about how you can fit into a competency in the Mac. We want the Mac should really be the overarching theme of whatever course you're, you're gonna be uh, proposing and 
that the competency should really be the overarching uh, aspect of that course, right? So if you wanna go into quantitative reasoning, quantitative reasoning is what that course is about. It's the main theme of that course. And you can fit nicely into that regardless of what department you happen to be coming from. Does that sort of make sense to everybody? Um, for the most part, our, our departments, our programs are doing a really good job of saying, we have these great content experts, we have great faculty, we have these great courses online, and how can we now fit them into whichever competency are? So I think that's the biggest thing to understand is that Mac should really be the overarching aspect of whatever course you, you are looking to propose. And I hope that answers the question. That's great, thanks, Aaron. Amy, the alignment of course content with SLOs and assignments is essential to delivering this MAC program. What kind of advice do you have for people as they develop their course proposals? So in the, um, in the Kim system, which Lynn is gonna talk about shortly, um, there is a section for um, where faculty and instructors need to uh, enter in the student learning outcomes and how their assignments support those student learning outcomes. And um, the main thing that I have seen um, with successful proposals has been specificity. Um, so for example, if someone is submitting a course um, with the health and well for the health and wellness competency, um, and I'm gonna pick information literacy because you know I'm a fan. Um, the <laughs> The, one of the student learning outcomes is synthesize information from multiple sources to support arguments and or inform decisions. Well, what council wants to see is what in what assignment is that happening? So, and when I say that, I don't mean, you know, don't put a paper because that is perhaps the type of assignment, but tell us what about the paper, you know, students will be writing a paper, they have to, you, you know, about the health and wellness topic of their choice, and they have to use three sources to back up their arguments. So something like that gives, um, gives counsel an idea of how you can demonstrate that students are actually getting the competencies that have been set out as part of this program. So, um, you know, if you ever have questions about that, or if you have something that you want to run by, um, someone, you can send those to me, you can email me, and I can give you suggestions. You can also use the gen ed at UNCG. Sorry, Lynn, I'm just throwing that out there without um, to asking you first. And she can forward those on to me um, because, you know, we, we really just want to be able to see that there are specific assignments happening in the course that will make sure that the students are um, meeting these learning outcomes. Thanks so much. Um, so Francis, many faculty and departments actually want to make the biggest impact with their MAC courses, and that may mean figuring out where the biggest need is in terms of competencies and student demand. Can you share with everyone what we know about in terms of course inventory and perhaps your thoughts on where we might benefit from new course development? Yeah, of course. I'm happy to. I'm going to place uh, two links into the chat to start with. And I'll uh, speak about those <clears throat> as we go along. So um, last year saw a major endeavor uh, on the part of the folks behind the scenes with Mac. Uh, it was known as the crosswalk of 2021-20 and uh, this was a process where GET courses were essentially um, uh, chosen as in some way um, amenable to working with MAC with some adjustment. And so a total of 290, about 290 courses were actually crosswalked from GEC into MAC. So you may, some of you here today, you may be uh, in a situation where you were teaching a GET course, which is now also a MAC course. And um, so one of the questions that you might be thinking about is how, how will this work? I think Aaron's comments about, uh, you know, understanding that MAC is a, is a competency-based program, it should definitely direct you in thinking about your, your course proposals or your course revisions. We had about 65 new, completely new courses be proposed over the course of last year. Uh, so that's really exciting. 
We are looking for more new course proposals, though, as we go forward. So one thing to 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 know is that the rollout of this new gen ed program, Mac, is intended to occur across four separate academic years. So each year represents a different phase of the rollout of this program. So you have a lot of time still, of course, to think about what kind of a course you might want to create for Mac. Um, and I think, uh, you know, one of the main messages I want to give you all is that, you know, you, you have our full support in that respect. Uh, we're so excited when new course proposals come through that are sort of from the ground up designed to work with Mac. I think that um, what I want to share with you, if you go ahead and click on the the second link that I posted in the chat, which is called fall fill rates. Thank you. Whoever did that, Sam, was that you, Jody? Thanks. <laughs> Thanks for pulling that up. Yeah, so here are some basic figures that may be of interest to, to you all. Um, we have, you know, a general tally of numbers within GEC and MAC. And of course, as students in GET graduate, the number of students needing GET courses will decrease accordingly. And as we introduce new cohorts uh, from this fall going forward who are automatically enrolled in MAC, we will see the numbers of students needing MAC courses will increase. So this first table that Sam is showing um, is featuring on the screen right now is telling you about the fill rate, the so-called fill rates for MAC courses this fall semester. And so fill rate is basically the ratio um, that occurs between seats offered and seats that were filled. So you can see the sort of percentage on the right-hand column tells you a little bit about demand ultimately for these particular competencies. I've highlighted three rows because of course this, this is data that is, is um, is not telling us exactly how many students need what competency, but I think it's still interesting information because it can, for example, show us that in the competency known as written communication, we are offering 74 sections of that competency this semester, but only 15 distinct courses are delivering those sections. Similarly, with oral comm, we see that we have 63 sections being offered, but only 10 distinct courses make up the entirety of the university's offerings uh, in relationship to oral comm. Uh, and data analysis is the other one that you see highlighted at the bottom of this table. Uh, we have 22 sections being offered this semester and only 10 distinct courses. I say only, of course, these things are always relative, but if you look at the other competencies, you will see that there's much more of a 50% um, a rate, uh, we would say, so that we have at least, uh, you know, um, we have at least, uh, for example, with foundations, 32 distinct courses that are being offered uh, one or two sections worth this semester for a total of 68 sections. So that's a much higher percentage that we see there. What that means as an upshot is that um, at least looking at the data for this fall, we can we can say, well, we see that demand is very high for these competencies. But relatively speaking, we do not have that many courses in the books yet that represent this competency. So if you are in a discipline that does writing, that does speaking, and I'm willing to bet you all are, um, or if you're in a natural science discipline or a discipline that works extensively on data analysis, you might want to think about competing in this category or proposing a course to be offered in this category, in this competency. Uh, Sam, would you mind scrolling down a little bit, actually, even further, <laughs> even further? And I just thanks. this table is also worth looking at real quick. So this is, again, a, a table that shows you the total course numbers by MAC competency. So this is, uh, this is a course catalog situation. This is looking at all of the active courses in MAC, not just the ones that are being offered this fall. And you can actually see from this uh, that we have, uh, again, very low numbers on oral comm, written comm, and data analysis. So, you know, ideally, we want to remember that MAC, and this is, I think, the last point I'll end on for now, MAC is meant to be a program that 
offers students a really wide variety of choice as to where they can accrue these foundational competencies. So if we're talking about oral communication, for instance, we should think about, you know, a student wanting to be able to choose amongst many different uh, subject areas to sort of satisfy this competency. Um, so in philosophy, for instance, we've had a chance to think about the fact that a lot of our courses focus on oral communication. And this is a great opportunity for us to put forward a course, uh, a MAC course in oral comm, just because this would be a, a nice way for students to satisfy that competency in an interesting discipline as well. So I'll stop there for now and uh, happy to answer more questions about this. And you all will have access to this document that I've posted. And the other link I posted is related. It's a link to our website, uh, MAC website, where you can actually access a table of all courses that have been approved in MAC. And you can search by attribute, by title, by number, um, and even by GEC category. So thanks. Fantastic. Thank you, Francis. <clears throat> So we're lucky to have Lynn Wyrick with us because she knows the ins and outs of putting a course proposal into the Kim system so that it can be reviewed by all of the relevant curriculum committees. Lynn is going to demonstrate for us the basics of putting a MAC proposal in Kim. Hi, everyone. I think um, most everyone has access to the course lead Kim system. So we'll start with that. If you do not have access to the, um, the Kim system, I will drop that link in the chat, the um, Kim Access Request form in the chat in just a second. I wanna walk you through two types of requests that you would use um, to request a MAC competency. The first would be adding a MAC competency to an existing course. You would enter your course prefix and number in the search box, click search, and then highlight the course and click on that. Click on the course number to open the course form. You want to edit the course. The type of change you want to use for an existing course is general education. Let me uh, add a, a, like a, a footnote to that as well. So if you are not changing anything else within the course. If you're not changing the title, you're not changing the course description, you're changing absolutely nothing in the course with the course content, you will select general education, select your catalog year, and you'll notice that all of the fields that you normally see with a course proposal are grayed out and you can't use them. That's because we've selected general education. Another um, item is the MAC courses are considered foundational, which means they are 100 or 200 level. We do have a 300 level exception request form, but if you enter anything above a 200 level, 299, you will not be able to access the gen ed for fields. That's an, a, an administrative task. We can work on that for you. And so once you click, click gen ed, you'll scroll to the bottom of the form, click yes for general education, this is where you will enter your rationale, and this is a 500 words or less just explaining why this course will fit within the MAC program, and it's appropriate for the MAC competency that you select. You select the MAC competency from the dropdown. Once you select the competency, you'll notice that the SLOs attached to that particular competency will appear, will populate directly below the competency. Once you've done once you've selected your competency, you'll go down to the SLO fields to add additional SLO lines. Click the green plus. To remove them, you click the red X. Health and Wellness has four SLOs, so you'll need four lines. You would enter your SLO number here in the course. Activity and assignment, and as Francis and Amy and Aaron all explained, um, you will need you can select one or two activities, not every activity or assignment on your, on your syllabus is going to um, align with the SLO. And again, we're only looking at SLO number one, which is demonstrate knowledge of factors that contribute to physical and or mental health. Select one or two assignments that you will use to um, uh, maybe assess that SLO. And then in the field, the third field, you would enter um, an explanation 
telling the gen ed council exactly how that activity or assignment will facilitate the student learning of that particular SLO. If you need to attach additional documentation, you're welcome to do that. Once you have completed the form, you click start workflow. Do that. The other option or the second option would be to propose a new course, very similar to the gen ed other than the fact that you have to complete the whole form. Select your course prefix, your course number, and your title, the effective catalog, of course, we're always working a year out. Enter the rationale, the rationale, this addresses the new course information. This is something that your department unit and the university level curriculum committees are going to review. Enter your course level, it's gonna be undergraduate. You select your SIP code, one schedule type, course description, prereqs, co-reqs, registration restrictions, you'd enter that information here. The essential course information, this particular field is for the course SLOs, not the MAC SLOs. So you should have course SLOs, MAC SLOs for your MAC courses. You do not need to enter the MAC SLOs in the essential course information field. Text, topics, grading scale, consultations. And to add the MAC competency, you would do the same thing you did with the um, existing course, you select yes. You enter a second rationale or an additional rationale. And this, uh, these fields, again, are address, addressed. Um, you're addressing the General Education Council with these particular fields, and you would start workflow. Any questions? That's awesome. Um, thank you, Lynn. You all are probably aware that Lynn is available all the time for help. So if you go to um, start presenting a new course or a revised course and you need help, reach out to Lynn, reach out to me, um, and we will step you through the process. So Amy started off as her discussion with SLOs in indicating that there, there are some lessons that we've learned from this. Um, so one of the lessons that Amy indicated we learned is that specificity when you're describing the assignments that are contributing to the MAC are really important. So just by saying we're going to do an essay to demonstrate student learning outcome number one is not going to be sufficient for the General Education Council. I'm wondering if anyone else on the panel, Francis, Aaron, Amy, Lynn, um, have thought about some lessons that we can learn from these the, the early era of introducing the MAC program that we can use as advice for people who are thinking about proposing a new course. Francis is nodding his head, her head. Do you wanna jump in? Aaron, you have your microphone off. Does anyone wanna jump in? Yeah, I'll jump in. I'm never one to turn down an open mic, right? Um, so yeah, and Amy really hit it right on the head. It's, you, you know, the biggest thing we see when we're doing these proposals, even actually a new proposal or a revision proposal really doesn't matter. We're seeing kind of the same errors pop up. It's, and Jody alluded to it, it's final exam does all five SLOs, whatever it is, right? It's, I took one exam and magically I got everything all assessed or I did one final paper, SLO 1-3. And that's really not showing any sort of connection between the two. And I'm going to use an example, and this is a bad example, but, but stay with me. It actually doesn't make sense. If you give a hundred question exam and two of those questions are related to the two SLOs in Mac, and you say, if a student passes, gets an A in the exam, they pass the Mac, they could have theoretically gotten a 98 on the exam. And the only two questions they got wrong were the two questions about the Mac right, the MAC SLOs. So yeah, they got a 98 in the exam, but they actually don't show competence in the one thing we care about, which is math. Does that sort of make sense? I know it's a weird example and it probably will never happen, but that's what you're saying when you say they get an A in an exam and all of a sudden they get credit for the MAC. And we really don't want that, not really, we don't want that at all. Now we're also not saying that you need to have this unbelievable rubric and everything already mapped out, especially for a new course, although, we have seen some proposal that's some really nice rubrics laid out. So I guess my best thing is if you have a really good idea of what assignments you want to use and kind of the prompts you're going to use, that's what we're looking for. We have a good idea. We kind of want to run this assignment. 
here are some of the prompts we want to run or we're going to do a quiz that's going to ask uh, these questions in all of these different points we're going to look at how they answer those questions i think that is kind of what we're looking for as a pair as opposed to just one exam and, and we're good to go and i'm hoping that and i and i have jody nodding her head so i'm yeah. hoping i said that right because she is the oracle when it comes to this and i don't want to tick off the oracle because the council needs to be able to look at the assignment that you've described and say yes if students do that we can be assured that they're demonstrating this student learning outcome in this competency in the MAC. So there needs to be enough information in that item that gives the council the, the opportunity to say, yes, we get it, we see the alignment, and that should work. Jody, can I hop in one, one last sure. time? We, in kinesiology, we actually have a course in MAC, and one of the things that we do is we address it, we actually say that we ask these five questions on our exams, and we actually then can go through it. We pull the data from those questions. So we can actually see exactly how students do on these five questions. And this one course has uh, eight sections. We ask the same questions across the eight sections. So we actually have consistency across all of our eight second sections. So we can actually say all students who are in this kinesiology course are all competent in the MAC because they've all answered these five questions the same. We tweak the language a little bit, obviously, but if you really want to go down to the nitty gritty, that's how we have it set up in Kin. I'm not saying that's the best situation, but when we do our assessment reports, we can actually say we know exactly what our percentage of, of how our students did and how many of our students are competent in, in these based on what actual questions we have. So, yeah. so you might want to consider doing it. It actually works really well for us, especially with multiple sections. When you have lecturers, adjunct faculty, visiting faculty, new faculty who might not know what you're doing, here, here's how you weigh it out. Yeah, so. we, see, we see that coordination when we've got multiple sections of um, a single course in the MAC often. I also want to mention that there are rubrics associated with each of the competencies in the MAC. Um, we're about to get the data analysis rubric posted. It was just approved a few days ago, and I'm putting the last um, details on that. So we'll get that posted. But there, there are rubrics that you can use to um, assess for yourself before you even propose the course and, and identify the assignments that you want to use um, for the course, whether they are going to align with the expectations for those rubrics. And I see that Samantha just, Sam just posted the, the link to the rubrics um, on the MAC website too, which is great. What other lessons? Lynn? Jody, not a lesson, but I was also going to say we can provide examples of approved proposals for each of the MAC competencies Thank if you, you um, if you would like. Yeah, that's great. Thank you very much for that. Francis, did you want to jump in? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, so it's I think it's important to remember that these these new competencies have between what two two to five student learning outcomes. And they were designed by groups of faculty who have expertise in uh, teaching those competencies. And they've been accordingly sort of designed in progressively um, more um, demanding sort of learning outcomes. So if you think about Bloom's taxonomy, right, we know that some of the lower levels of learning include things like being able to describe or identify a certain subject matter, but a more challenging ask would be for then for a student then to evaluate what they've what they've identified so a lot of the competencies are built up in such a way not all of them but many of them so that the first student learning outcome is really trying to get at some um, some form of description or identification or summarization uh, and the, the the other SLOs progressively demand more of the student and as an instructor who's designed a lot of a lot of courses I I to me, I like that as a scaffold to think about, you know, what is it that we're really trying to achieve, first of all, in this course at the minimal level? Uh, and then how are we going to use that achievement to build towards the, the goals, the learning goals that come probably later in the course? So when you're thinking about your course proposal and filling in that table of how the particular MAC competency student learning outcome uh, works um, with student learning and an assessment, perhaps, of that student learning, you can kind of try to line those up in terms of progressively more challenging, uh, challenging experiences. 
that's a suggestion. It, it doesn't hold for all of the competencies, but it's one thing that could help you in, in writing your course proposal uh, to meet um, council's specifications and expectations. Yeah, and that allows you to set up the assignments so that students can build on uh, those experiences as well, building up to the, the higher order of thinking. That's great. Um, I was going to offer one thing in a lesson that I've noticed as the General Education Council is evaluating proposals. The rationale is incredibly important, particularly when you are demonstrating something like diversity and equity. So you want to explain to the council how the course, how the course content is going to fit into that particular competency. What are the components um, that you know might not jump out automatically to you in a in a, a course in a discipline, any variety of disciplines from you know history to economics to public health to whatever. Make sure that you're explaining the connection of the course content with the competency that you are seeking, really like draw the council to the specific units or components or overarching themes of the course so that the, the council sometimes um, will get a sense that they should be evaluating the course based on the title, um, when in fact there really needs to be some substantive description and some, stu some substantive um, drawing connections for the council as they're evaluating um, course content. Any other lessons learned before we open up um, the conversation to questions from the panel? Okay, I know we, we took a lot of time. I hope that what we've shared has been useful. What are the questions that you all have for us? And you can open up your mic, you can throw a question in the chat. Um, I see a question with GEC. There were SI and WI markers where courses were approved on semester by semester in accordance with how those courses were taught. This resulted in some sections with the WI marker or SI marker, but not all sections. I don't see this occurring under MAC right. That is correct. Um, therefore, some sections wouldn't necessarily be approved to meet a particular MAC marker compared to all sections. Does that make sense? So we can just blanket um, cover this. We are not doing anything on a section by section basis with the MAC. So when a competency is approved for a course, it's approved for all sections of a course and it's expected and in fact assumed that that MAC competency will be taught in all sections because when the courses are posted for scheduling, they will always carry that MAC competency. So you don't wanna get yourself in a situation where instructors don't realize that they're teaching a competency in the MAC. We wanna make sure that we're sharing that information, that every faculty member teaching every section knows of the obligation and the involvement um, in the MAC program. So that was a great question. What other questions are there? Jody? Yes. Uh, this, is, this is Noelle. Hey, Noelle. Um, hi. So I'm wondering, uh, it's also true as I, I'm stirring <laughs> my memory a little bit for this one, but a course can only be writing concentration or oral, or I mean, um, right, it's one or the other, written communication or oral communication. Is that right? Yeah, thanks for asking for that clarification, Noelle. Yes, um, in the MAC program, a course can have only one competency. And we don't have like we did in the GAC, the distinction between categories and markers. Um, with markers, markers could be added on to a course that had a single category. But in the MAC, everything is a competency and there's only one competency associated with the course. So a course can choose to be written or it can choose to be an oral communication, but a course will not be both. Um, and we're going to be looking at um, in future phases for the MAC, uh, upper level courses will be integrated in order to enhance the learning that's happening at the foundational level for the MAC and we'll have the same situation where a course might be enhancing the oral communication or it might be enhancing the written communication. But yes, thank you for that clarification, Noelle. Thank you. Yeah. What else? All right. Well, um, 
And I see Sam just post in case people have to leave a little early. Here's the next Mac Monday, which is October 4th, which is two weeks from today from 12 to 1240. And there's a sign up for that. I'm sorry, Maria, did I interrupt you? I wanted to ask a, a question about the timeline for approving courses. So yeah, I, a great I don't know. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. um, the curriculum review process is open now for academic year 2022-2023. Um, we don't approve courses mid-year for the spring at this point. So at the curriculum requests that are coming through would be for the next academic year. But um, that deadline is open and will be open until October 31st. They have things have to get to the undergraduate curriculum committee for a new course or to the general education council for an existing course that's adding a gen ed competency to it um, by October 31st. So there's still a lot of time to get a course through the review process, um, depending on the deadlines that an academic unit has set. So if you were looking at establishing a course that um, exists in the College of Arts and Sciences, I would touch base with their curriculum chair, committee chair just to make sure that you're going to hit all of their deadlines. Um, but as long as it gets to the UCC by December 31st or to the Gen Ed Council by December or October 31st, I apologize. As long as it gets to those councils by October 31st, it will be considered for next year. Um, the committees will continue to work on requests until they have finished all of their work. One other quick question, if yeah. you don't mind. I'm sorry. Um, Not at all. So I'm thinking about a specific course that ADS offers um, that originally carried the written communication, well, writing intensive and speaking intensive marker. And I think I heard Lynn say that typically, um, if we were to try to have a course that was designated oral communication, it would not be above the 200 level. Is that correct for Mac? If we were to have an oral communication course? Um, and I'm going to let Amy or Aaron or anybody, Francis, anybody else who wants to jump in. So Noelle, you're asking about a foundational level course? Well, I guess what I'm asking is originally this course was a 400 level and it was a capstone, right? Okay. And it made sense to do a walkover for it as the written communication designated course. So that's what it is. Ah. Yeah. But now we're lacking what well, we're trying to provide students with, you know, the, the things that they need within the program major. Um, so I'm trying to figure out what makes sense as an oral communication markered course. Um, you know, it's both for majors, but obviously anyone across the university could take it. Am I not making sense? I'm not very verbal today. <laughs> um, Can I jump in, Jody? Yes, please go ahead, Lynn. So I think where some of the confusions coming in is um, with the old gen ed program, you had the WI and SI markers in the major that were required as part of the general education um, program. So you had um, 300, 400, and some 500 level courses that carried the WI and SI. So I think, Noelle, what you're asking is, can that 400 level course, since it was SI or WI, convert to the oral or um, written communication competency? Yes. Yeah. And actually, I feel like I we did a walkover for 410 ADS. We, would, we did not crosswalk any of the 300 and 400 level courses. Oh. So if, if it wasn't a 100 or 200, it didn't get crosswalked automatically. Oh. Noelle, I think what I would recommend though um, is that because there is going to be this a later phase where we integrate the written and the oral into um, the, the MAC approach. So what I mean by that is each program will be asked to identify points in which students will enhance the foundational competency learning mm -hmm. in their major. And that capstone course will probably serve you better as one of those points of enhancement for the integration within the major. So I don't think I would advise you to do anything with your capstone. I would say if you are looking for a foundational level writing course or oral competency course for your students, 
I might think about either introducing a new course in African in African American diaspora studies, or looking at a course that you already offer and seeing if you could convert it into a writing or an oral communication class. Okay. As opposed to touching that capstone. Yes, got it. Thank you so sure. much. So yeah, well. yeah. Yeah. And Noella, it could also um, have you looked at the college wide the college writing requirement? Yes. Yeah. So your course could also probably um, fulfill that requirement as well. Yeah. Okay. Great okay. point. Thank you, Lynn. What other questions? I see that we are at 1240, 1242 now. Um, and I know that we wanted to keep these sessions to about 40 minutes. So we are happy, those of us who are on the panel are happy to hang out if anyone has any questions that you want to ask um, after the we're done here. Um, but Samantha, Sam, I will hand it over to you. I dropped all the relevant links in the chat for the next session. It's October 4th and it's on advising in Mac. Um, and then after that, we start a kind of newish series, but still Mac Mondays on teaching within Mac, um, within the different competencies. So be sure to check out those dates as well. And uh, there's also an assessment form in the chat, as well as the sign up to all the webinars. So um, to let us know how we did. Um, and uh, again, I can stop the recording and y'all can hang out um, so that we are fair there. So let me stop the recording.